Hey friends, it's Sheree, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing a little catch up with you. I'm going to be talking to you about sewing plans, fabric I've picked up, patterns I've picked up, and also what's happening in my life with regards to sewing this month. But first, if you're new to my channel, welcome, and if you're a returning person, thank you so much for your continued support. All right, let's get into it. All right. I'm starting this video with a disclaimer, y'all. I'm sick, okay? Like, I have another cold. I've been trying to get over it for a while now, and it's so hard, <laughs> okay? It's taking forever to get better. So I might have to do a lot of, like, cut forwards and editing just to cut out when I've coughed or made weird noises <laughs> or whatever, and I'm trying to drink some water to keep my throat nice and clear for you so that you can hear what I'm talking about. Also, my kids are home and they're crafting, making their Valentines in the other room, so you might hear them. Please forgive that as, you know, I'm a mom and our household is busy. And if I waited for the perfect scenario situation to film, it would never happen. So anyways, let's get into all the things, okay? Now, um, I did post a video talking about my sewing intentions for 2023, and a couple of the things that I mentioned in that video is that I wanted to shop my stash first with regards to patterns and fabric, and to use up the things that I have in my stash. However, I also mentioned that uh, if there was a pattern that I did not have in my stash that I really knew that I wanted to sew and not something I was on the offense about, that I would allow myself to pick it up. And you know me, y'all, I'm always trying to shop on a sale, okay? I'm trying to get that discount, save them coins, okay? So um, everything I picked up is on sale. Additionally, with regards to fabric, I picked up some fabrics that I did not have in my stash, um, and I've actually got some projects planned for those fabrics, and they were incredibly inexpensive. So we'll start with the patterns first, okay? Today, what's today's date? Where's my thumb? Today is the 11th of February, and it's the last day of the sale at Joanne where they have the Nomi patterns for $1.99. They also have Simplicity for $2.99 and McCall's for $1.99. So this is like a fantastic time to buy patterns if you are a person that um, is building up your pattern stash or there's something you've had your eye on for a while, you can get it right now for a fraction of the cost. So I'll talk to you about the patterns that I picked up. And um, there aren't a ton. As I mentioned, I'm being very careful and cautious about what I'm picking up. So. Um, and no repeats if I can hack something in my stash. Now, in the last release of the Nomi patterns, I picked up the Brittany J. Jones pattern ME2002, which is this pattern here. And I sewed the shirt. I had a bit of a sewing fail, and I'll share that with you in a minute. Um, and the shirt was too big. I am going through something health-wise right now, so my weight has drastically changed. I'm trying to stabilize it, but it's incredibly difficult because my diet has changed for medical reasons. And so there are parts of my body that have stayed the same and there are other parts of my body that are shrinking at kind of a rapid rate. So um, finding clothes to fit is really hard. And even though my measurements might still fall within a size in the pattern, I'm finding when I actually put the garment on, it's still too big in certain areas. It almost looks odd. So I had that problem when I sewed this pattern because I made a size 16, which is what I always make, and the 16 was just too big. For instance, um, the shoulders fell off right here, and also in the sides, it was just way too much room. It did not fit hugged to my body like it does on Brittany in, the, in these pictures. And I want mine to look like hers, right? So I actually picked up another copy of this pattern and I wanna keep my size 16 that I cut out. I didn't wanna cut down to the next size down, which is a 14, because since my weight does this, and especially right now while I'm figuring out my health, I still wanna be able to use that size 16 because a size 16 has pretty much, with most of the big five patterns, been my size. So um, I might be back in that solid 16 once I figure out my health stuff. 
So I don't want to mess up that pattern. I want to keep it a 16 and I picked up another one because it's $1.99. So this one I'm going to cut a 14 and I'm sure that it'll work out beautifully. The pattern itself is super easy, quick to put together, really nice pattern. Um, the only challenge that I had was my body. My boobs still say that I'm a size 16, but everything else says that I'm not. So um, I have to figure that out. Also, I did something that I'll talk about later in the video that kind of threw off my my pattern or my final garment for this pattern. And I'll talk to you later about that. So that was the first pattern that I got. The next pattern that I got, I actually got it for myself and my husband. I keep saying that I buy things for him, but then I turn around and not so for him. <laughs> Anyway, um, so, but I bought this pattern for the both of us. It's the Nomi pattern ME 2023, and this is the Norris pattern. I'm excited about this pattern because it looks extra comfortable. I don't know how I feel about the shorts necessarily, and I don't think that my husband would wear these shorts, but if he's down, I'm down because they're very quick and easy. So, um, but I just like the idea of sweat shorts. I've made a few pairs that I've hacked uh, sweat, sweatpant patterns and made them into shorts. Um, and I've shared those in the past. So I wore those to death in these last few years because sweat shorts are a bit warmer and the Bay Area, it's never super, super hot. I mean, we get a few days here or there. So it's like I can wear shorts, but I also can still be cozy. <laughs> And I almost always pair them with a cardigan or like a match. I made sets like a matching cardigan or a sweatshirt. So anyways, I love the idea of this, but I really bought it because the sweatshirt pocket is cool and the hood is cool. I'll come in close so that you can see, hopefully. Some of these details are just unique. Um, I'm a person that is into a full length sleeve. So this crop situation here, I may not do, but I do love the full um sleeve so i thought this is really nice and i picked this one up and then okay this one i'm extremely excited about this is me 2016 and this is beaut du jour and i love this dress pattern there's two different variations there's a uh, longer dress with a shorter puff sleeve and then there is a shorter dress with a fuller puff sleeve i love it i love it and if you're following my elevate with ankara sewing series right with Ankara fabric, these puffs, these awesome tears, it's a no brainer. Anyways, it's a gorgeous dress. I love it and I can't wait to make it. So I picked this one up. I also picked up um, Aronica's pattern, Aronica Beep Cole, and this one is ME 2015. And I wanted to get her other pattern that released in the last um, launch but I didn't think that I would be able to fit the sizes available and also it wasn't quite my style however this right here I think is really cute and there is a size 16 women's and my bust measurements fall in my waist falls in it's a bit wide on the hips like right now my hips are 37 which I haven't seen 37 in years y'all and, and not, that's the last place that I wanted to lose weight like in my perfect mind, if I'm going to be losing weight, it should be only belly, <laughs> but the belly is there. <laughs> Maybe not as big as it was before, but I have lost what little bit of hips and butt that I had, which is sadly unfortunate. So I can make the skirt, but I will probably have to grade down on my own um, to make it fit me better. Uh, and I've always wanted to make a bustier type of top. So I'm excited about this. Plus this pattern has cup sizes. And that was one of my biggest hopes for the Nomi pattern line is that they would have patterns with more cup sizes because a lot of pattern companies out there don't do cup sizes and your girl needs them, okay? Because something might fit me perfectly in the shoulders or in the body, but the bust just, it ain't working. So it's always like a full bust situation. I can never just go ahead and make something straight out of the package without some type of alteration. So I'm excited that this has bust cups and because it is a bustier like bra type situation, it absolutely should have um, cup sizes. So I'm excited about this. I'm so excited to support her by buying this pattern as well because I wanted to buy the first one and I wasn't able to. So this is really great. Happy about that. The next one is of course Kichi B Style. You knew I was going to buy this pattern you guys. ME 2020. She is so cool. <laughs> 
She is so cool. Look at her style. It's so amazing. Um, this is definitely something that I would wear on a regular basis for work or going around about town. I love it. It's got these really gorgeous cargo pockets on the top of the dress and on the bottom of the dress. So it's a wrap dress. I love it. I definitely want to make this soon. If you're wondering why I'm talking so fast, it's because I have so many things I want to talk to you about. So please forgive me. Um, the next thing that I got, of course, is Brittany J. Jones pattern. I love Brittany J. Jones, so whatever she comes out, I'm buying. Um, but this one in particular, I could see myself wearing a lot, and I'm very eager to sew it up. This is ME 2013, and if you can see here, there is a long skirt, and this is a knit pattern, so that's another thing that's got me excited. It's very comfortable. And then, um, so I love the long skirt, skirt over the short, but I also love the top with the sleeve over the tank. Now, if I lived in a warmer climate, I would absolutely go for the tank and the short skirt, but I'm often cold, so it's gonna be these two for me. And I'm really excited about it. It's gonna be comfortable and cute, and yes, Brittany, you did that, okay? Very cute. <laughs> the next thing that I got is actually a McCall pattern. Oh, so that was it for the Nomi patterns. There were lots of other releases in this um, season, but um, none of them were, I guess totally unique from patterns that I have in my stash already and as I made my pro that promise to myself to not buy a new pattern if I can hack something that I already own to make it that um I didn't pick them up also there were a couple that just weren't my style and again from my intentions video I shared that I will not be buying patterns just because they're gorgeous I want to buy them if I'm going to actually wear them okay so the next one is McCall M8339 and it's a gorgeous dress I've seen several people make this dress and it is so cute I can't wait to make this you guys it's so cute I can absolutely see myself making all three views I know that I would probably get the most wear though out of view B and view C um, but I'm really excited and I can't wait to make this because this is absolutely something that I would wear regularly And also I love that it has a closed back which means I don't have to worry about my bra showing a lot of times when I find a Dress lights like this got kind of like a simple construction But just a small little detail in the front when you flip the dress around on the back There's like a whole back out or <laughs> there's a low V in the back or there's some fun situation because the front is not as you know what I'm saying? Um, and so I, I just, I end up buying them and then I don't make them because I need to wear my big old heavy duty supportive bra and I don't want it showing in the back. So anyway, I love this pattern. Can't wait to make it. Let's talk about the next pattern. I have McCall M8345 and it is a pinafore style dress. And the reason why I picked it up is because I'm in love with this long version here. And also because there's some unique details to this guy. First of all, it has a front split, which you can do on this long version as well as this uh, mid-length version. And also in the back, there's a neat crossover detail with the straps. And I thought that that would be really fun. Now, I do have quite a few pinafore dress patterns in my stash. However, they are different than this particular style. And I probably won't ever make view A because it's kind of similar to some of the things that I have. None of the patterns that I have have that back detail with the straps crossing over, and none of them have a front split in the front. But I just think this looks really cool, and I love a long dress. I can absolutely see myself wearing this with my combat boots or with my knee-high boots now while it's cold, but then transitioning to sandals and also to my tennis shoes in the spring and summer. So I definitely feel good about this purchase. And again, I got these all on sale, okay? So these were $1.99 and I didn't spend as much as I spent on my indie patterns that I've been sewing up that are similar to this. I do have, I think, three or four, um, pinafore style jumper dresses so but they're all different and because I didn't use, use basic solid colors for those they are actually printed um, I don't wear them as often so I could envision myself making this out of a solid color that could go with lots of different things so I could get more wear out of it but I do have a corduroy one that I wear quite often but it's a bit short so this one gives me the length I need for right now 
All right, those were all the patterns that I picked up. Let's talk about fabric. Now, a lot of my sewing friends out here have been fortunate enough to go fabric shopping at Walmart and they get these amazing deals. And I didn't even know until I started watching their videos that Walmart sold fabric. I don't know, I must have been sleeping under a rock, but there's no Walmart close to me. And there used to be one in Oakland and when it was there, I always went for the tech department and I never ever ventured over to any of the craft sections. So I didn't even know what was over there, okay? You know, you go, you look for your yearly sweats because they used to have really good sweats. You get your, you know, basic things, your toiletries, you get, you know what I mean? Like I didn't even venture to the craft section. Also, I was a new mom and that took priority over everything. Crafting wasn't even a thing, okay, at <laughs> that time in my life. So I didn't realize that there was such great deals in the fabric section. So um, anyways, I happened to be traveling with my family and we stopped to charge the car. And while the car was charging, I took my kids in Walmart. They were like, we've never been in Walmart. Can we go in? Can we see what's in there? Is it like Target? And I was like, well, not really, but let's go check it out. So we went in there and they got some fabric and I got some fabric. And I'll talk to you about what I got and what the plans are. So the first thing that I got that they picked is this four yard bundle it was six dollars and if you can look closely it is a athletic type of fabric it has holes all through it and the boys actually want jerseys so they have a youtube channel and i will list it be below if you have a little guy or girl that plays video games or likes to watch other kids play games um, then you can check out their first video that they posted. Um, but they actually want to have a branded type of jersey, which is so cute to me, okay? They wanted their own merch. <laughs> anyway, so I got this. They picked it and they also um, picked yellow ribbing. And so we're gonna make like basketball style jerseys and it's gonna say the name of their channel on the front. I haven't decided if I'll use my embroidery machine or my Cricut machine with my um, my heat press um, but either way it'll it'll say whatever it is that they want to say and it's super cute I also purchased a I don't know I think it was like a four dollar uh, jersey pattern which is on Etsy I can't remember what the seller is I will link it below if you're interested in making any of your kids basketball jerseys but that's the pattern I'm gonna use it's actually pretty simple so um, yeah that was the first thing I picked up for them and then my youngest, he's obsessed with sewing. So he's been sewing himself, which is really cute. He's seven years old. And so I've been teaching him to hand sew, which is something I hate to do. I've mentioned that on my channel already before, but for my babies, I will do it, okay? So I've been teaching him how to hand stitch things and they've also made things on the sewing machine, but he wants to make tote bags. And so they have these really cool one yard bundles. And I think these were like $3 and this one is NASA themed. And so he wants to make a tote bag out of it. And then he also also picked this army print and he said he wanted a tote bag out of it now he's telling me he wants to combine them somehow and regardless of mommy saying you know that kind of clashes I don't know that you should put these two things together he has made a decision and he's gonna stick by and I'm gonna support him okay because somebody including my son will think it's cool so he's gonna make a tote bag with this and he's very excited about it all right, the last few bundles are of course just for me <laughs> and it's only three. Um, I shared in a previous pattern haul and a couple actually that I love sweatshirt dresses and every time I see a unique sweatshirt dress, I always feel drawn to buy it because I don't have one like it. Um, but they're just so cozy. As you can see, like right now I have on sweats. I actually embroidered this sweatshirt. If you can see that, that's Frida. Um, I love sweats. I wear them all the time. Whether it's be the work the weekend, I don't care. I love me some cozy clothes and I wear them in the summertime too. So I picked these French Terries because what an amazing deal, okay? This French Terry is three yards and it was eight bucks. It says it right there on the bundle. Eight dollars. I love that it is like a tie dye, but it has some non-typical color patterns, I think, in my opinion. A lot of times when I see tie dye, I don't see this really cool light green with a burgundy red and a purpley color and i just felt like the combination of the tie-dye was really unique so i'm excited about that so this will definitely be either a lounge set or it's going to be a sweatshirt dress 
And then there's another um, tie dye that is pink and gray. And also it was, I believe, three yards for eight bucks. And it's the thinner French Terry, which I made a Tilly and the Buttons Billy sweatshirt dress last month out of this fabric. And I wear that thing so often. So sweatshirt dress is coming and I'm excited about it. So that's what these are about. And then the last piece of fabric that I got is a three yard for eight bucks jersey. It definitely feels like a um, double brush poly. It, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't feel quite as thick as a double brush poly, but the texture of it and the color pigment makes me think that it is a double brush poly. But on the package, it, it just says undetermined fiber. So I won't know for sure. Um, but it's gorgeous. I think it's a fun fabric and I actually have, and I'll insert a clip of this pattern on the screen, a new pattern that I purchased from Pattern Scout that recently released and I got it on sale for $9. And it is a really great knit long sleeve shirt with a square neck. I didn't have one in my stash and the one that I thought I had that was the same was actually a bodysuit and it was not square neck. So I didn't feel um, bad buying it because this is definitely something that I would wear on a regular basis. And it doesn't, even though it's a fitted t-shirt and it's square neck, it doesn't show cleavage, which I think is fantastic because it's sexy, but it doesn't show the boobies as far as the skin is concerned. You get the shape, but you don't get the skin, you know? I'm all about that. It's called the Bridget T and it's so cute. I'll insert pictures, but I think this would make such a cute Bridget T. And then I can either with, with what's left over, make a tiny little pencil skirt uh, using one of my favorite patterns, or I can make a tank top either. I don't know, but I thought it was a really great fun print. I even thought about making a dress out of that fabric. I might change my mind and make a dress, but I thought uh, if I make separates and I can wear them separately and it would be really cute, but maybe a dress in that might be too much. I don't know, we'll figure it out. But those are the things that I picked up from Walmart. To my friends that have been shopping fabric at Walmart forever and ever and ever, you guys know what's up, okay? You know what's up, because they have some cool deals. There was lots of stuff there, but I honed in on those bundles because the price was right. All right, so patterns and fabric, a check. Let's talk about sewing plans. Now, if you guys didn't know this already, um, this is February, which is BHM Pattern Designer Challenge, which is hosted by Natita of So Natural Dane. And she has been doing this challenge for five years now, but this year is special in that she has a live event in Houston. And I'm so very excited that I actually plan to go this year. And it's gonna be a great opportunity for me to do, which is another thing on my goals list, is connect with other sewing people, sewing friends. Like I have quite a few sewing friends in the YouTube space and the Instagram space that I've never met in real life. So this will be an opportunity for me to meet them in real life. And so I'm very excited about that. And with BHM Pattern Designers, the challenge is that you sew up a garment in this month that was designed by a black pattern designer. So I have lots of patterns that I can choose from, but the ones that I chose were ones that I hadn't sewn yet. I did have a couple of sewing fails, <laughs> I'll be completely honest. Um, the first thing that I made for this challenge was actually the Handmade Millennial Nomi pattern, and the issue that I had with that is sizing. So mm, it fit my body, but it did not fit my bust at all. Not even close, couldn't install a zipper if I wanted to because my whole boobs would be hanging out and it would be super tight. It, it just wasn't working out. So that is definitely a pattern that if you are a busty person, you will need to do a full bust adjustment. I really tried not to, but as I mentioned before, it's almost unavoidable, especially when we're talking about close fitting garments that need a zipper in the back. I almost always have to make adjustments to the bust. So the plus side of the version that I made that didn't work out is that I used some very inexpensive satin fabric. Um, it wasn't like completely expensive. I mean, I feel bummed because I spent money <laughs> on the fabric, but it wasn't my most expensive fabric, okay? So it was a learning lesson. 
I will probably revisit that pattern again, maybe when my weight isn't so crazy. Um, and I will absolutely figure out the full bust adjustment on that. If you are a full busted woman who does sewing, sew alongs or sewing tutorials, or whatever on YouTube or Instagram and you have done a video on how to do a full bust adjustment on that particular pattern, put it below so that myself and all of my other busty friends can take a look. The jumpsuit itself is really cute. The pattern came together really easily. I mean, it wasn't an issue of the pattern itself. It was an issue of it just wasn't drafted for a body like mine. I mean, unfortunately, it just wasn't. That's just what it is, okay? Um, so it didn't work out for me, but I do love the pattern so much, so if I can make it work, I'd love to. Okay, so that was the first sewing fail. The other sewing fail that I had also for the challenge <laughs> is that I decided I wanted to hack this Brittany pattern. This is the ME2002. I just made the shirt. I did the cropped version, and I'll give you a close-up, but I did a long sleeve. The first thing that I did, which actually worked out really nice, is I, well, let me back up. I wanted to change the sleeve on it because I have an idea for an outfit that requires a puff sleeve top, okay? I am a person that likes to sketch out my sewing plans when I can, and the sketch that I drew had a puff sleeve, okay? And so I was like, okay, I will do the, um, I think it's called, cut and spread method. So I took the sleeve pattern from this pattern and I traced it on a piece of paper. And the first thing that I did is I decided that I was going to cut slits into the pattern, spread it apart to give myself an additional five inches at the sleeve cap so that I could create gathers. And then I decided, you know what? I don't want a three quarter inch uh, sleeve. So I added three inches to the middle of the sleeve to extend the length of the sleeve itself. And when I did that, it looked great, okay? It looked really good. Um, and I added the sleeves to it and everything. But the problem is that I think I probably needed to add more volume to the sleeves. I'll let you see what it looks like. So mind you, this has been crumpled up on the couch. So please forgive any awkwardness. If you look at it, the neck is gorgeous, right? Just like the pattern. We got the splits, okay? We have the longer sleeve, which I think the body of the sleeve is probably too full. So that's something I would need to do is narrow this a bit more. But what I was disappointed about is the fullness of the puffs. I wanted big puffs and I thought, oh, surely five inches would be enough. It wasn't. It just gave a tiny little puff and it wasn't exactly what I wanted. So I'm bummed about that, but I will wear this and it will be cute. I just can't wear it the way I envisioned it. So another white top in my stash, um, which will probably end up being jammies. I ain't gonna lie because it's so soft. I had trouble finding a t-shirt pattern designed by a black person. Um, that had a puff sleeve. So I had seen some woven patterns, but not a t-shirt pattern with puff sleeves. So that is why I tried to hack that pattern to have a fuller sleeve. And to be perfectly honest, this still might work, only I think I needed to focus my gathers just right here at the top center instead of trying to, I don't know if you can see this, I made little stars right here. I think that was just too much of a distance to gather. Maybe it would have been more pronounced if I had just made the gathers right here in the middle. I don't know. Um, I will keep this uh, because I think that it is a nice looking shirt. The sleeve looks all right. It's just not what I had planned or envisioned. Um, so I'm back to the drawing board with regards to finding the right top. But I'm on the hunt to find the perfect shirt to pair with my Tabitha Sewer, the Nina jumpsuit. This is what I'm making for my bottoms. So I've already cut the fabric. I'm not gonna show you the fabric because, nah, I'm gonna show you. All right, so I've decided to make this out of a red denim. It's already been cut, 
so cute. And the reason why is because the version that Tabitha Sower actually made and promoted her pattern in was red and it just looks so cute and fun and I fell in love with it and always knew I wanted to make the same pattern in red. But the twist is that I don't believe that she used denim and I used bull denim. So I'm really excited about this because it'll keep me warm in the winter and transition me through the seasons and I'm hoping that it comes out nicely because I've already had two fails with regards to the BHM pattern challenge. So fingers crossed this works out because this is my sewing project for today. As you can see, I have my dream box all set up because your girl is working. I'm sewing today. Um, we had sports this morning. I took my kids to buy all the supplies to make their Valentines. I look a hot mess because I'm tired, but it's happening. I'm sewing my jumpsuit today. Okay, I'm gonna take a little breather and then I'm gonna sew my jumpsuit and it's gonna come out fantastic. Pump me up guys, I need some support here. It's gonna turn out fantastic, okay? So that's the plan for this. Um, my other plan is I'd really love, so it's a three day thing for me, right? So I'm going Friday so that I can attend the meet and greet on Friday night. I'm going to the event on Saturday and then I want to fly home on Sunday wearing something also that I made. So mm, we'll see how it works out, but that is one of my outfits. The other outfit, I want to make the Kichibi Styles uh, ME 2007, which is this one here. And I've already purchased the fabric. However, it's taking forever to get here. I'm like, oh, it's a time crunch. It's a time crunch, I'm stressing out. <laughs> but eventually it will get here and it's a really cool fabric that I ordered from Melanated Fabrics. So I hope to make this as one of my outfits that I take on my trip and um, I'm gonna accessorize it and make it cute. So fingers crossed this turns out as well. And then my last plan, if I have time, I don't know if I'll have time guys to be honest, is that I've always wanted to sew this pattern. It's been in my stash for a long time. This is the Lisa Loungewear Style Sew Me pattern and I believe that this pattern company is no longer in existence but you can still purchase this pattern on Etsy. Um, but, and, and some fabric stores I think still sell it as well. But I love this pattern because it has three different really cool loungewear views. I'll give you a closer look. I think this would be a perfect outfit for traveling. So if I have time, one of these three views is going to be my airplane outfit. So those are my sewing plans for BHM. If you hadn't already heard about the event, please head over to So Natural Dane, Natita, to her channel. And she has several videos that are sharing such wonderful information. Like if you didn't know that they were black um, pattern designers and you wanna support one, she has a whole video dedicated to talking about um, the black pattern designers that she knows as well as on her blog or her website. You can find all the information for all the designers that she knows about. She also has one for bag makers um, and I think quilters. She also has a reference to black owned fabric stores and notion stores and things of that nature all on her YouTube channel and on her website. So you can learn it all. If you'd like to support a black owned business during the month of Black History Month, I think this is a great opportunity to not only join a new challenge, but also check out a new business. So please head over to her channel and her website to learn more. All right, so those are the sewing plans that I have to get done. I have an additional sewing plan that may not get done. It was supposed to be done by now already, and obviously I'm talking about it now, so it didn't happen. I wanted to make myself two um, Valentine's Day dresses. I've been wanting to make this gorgeous dress. This is the Array Top and Blouse by Paper Cut Patterns. And it is a very simple sew, something that I can sew up really quickly. I just have to have time to sew it. I cut the pattern, but I didn't cut the fabric. I have decided that I'm finally going to cut into that red faux suede. And this was gonna be my Valentine's Day dress. And no, I'm not going on a date. Um, <laughs> I'm just not, we don't do that anymore, guys. We don't do that anymore, especially on a Tuesday night. Like who's babysitting on Tuesday night? Anyway, um, this was gonna be my Valentine's Day dress out of that faux suede that I got at Joann's and shared in a previous haul. There's another fabric that I have in my stash that I think might be more appropriate 
considering the job that I do and the fact that children will be touching me and sometimes not with clean hands, that would ruin this. Um, but I have this right here. It's a Rayon Shelly that I got from LA Finch Fabric. It was gifted to me sometime last year and I love it and I haven't cut into it, but what a perfect Valentine's Day fabric. It has hearts on it. It's got pink and cream and red, really cute fabric. And I think would be a cute dress for Valentine's Day. So, I mean, it may not happen. It probably won't happen, but this is something that I had been planning all along and didn't get to. Um, one last thing, I, I, mi I missed sharing one fabric and also some buttons with you. So this particular fabric is a part of the Joanne Black History Month prints. This came out, I believe last year, and I missed out on it. So this time around it restocked and I got this and it was on sale. So I don't remember what I paid for it, but I wanna say it was like $6.99 a yard. And so I got enough to make a dress out of it, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna actually make a dress out of it. I thought about pants, but it's a thinner cotton, so I would have to line them. So mm, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I thought this was a really cool print and I love that it has women of different skin tones and different hairstyles on it. So really cool, loved it. So I picked that up. The next thing that I wanna share with you is that I have recently repartnered with Indie Stitch and I'm very excited about it. I think it was a year ago that I was partnered with them where they sent me their subscription service and I shared it here on my channel and we are partnering again, so I'm very excited. If you didn't already know about Indie Stitch, Indie Stitch is a monthly sewing subscription service and they send you a box like this every month and inside is a sewing project and the projects are garments. So if you are a person who likes to be surprised, likes little gifts in the mail, or has trouble coming up with ideas on things that you'd like to sew, or wanna, you wanna broaden your pattern stash and you don't know where to begin, this is a really cool service that can help you out. I know for me personally, I love receiving um, sewing subscriptions for one reason in particular, I love fabric, but the second one is that I'm always introduced to a new pattern company that I've never heard of. And so I really love that aspect of a subscription service. And so I'm going to share with you what came in my box. And also there'll be a link below so that if you're interested in signing up with Indie Stitch after seeing what I received, you're absolutely welcome to use that link to shop their website. Okay, so in this month's box, we have the Valletta top, and I'll insert a picture in the screen so that you can see what this top looks like. And one of the things that I think is super cool is that there's an information card that comes in every box and it tells you what's inside the box. And it also gives you a special code that will take you directly to a sewing tutorial for the garment that's in the box. It also has a code for you to download the pattern if you'd like to have both a digital copy of the pattern as well as the paper copy because the paper copy is included in the box. So the Valletta top is really nice. It's a very loose fitting, comfortable top and it has these really gorgeous tassels on the front or ties on the front and I'm really excited to try this pattern out. The fabric for this particular box is actually a rayon chalet and I received the red colorway and what's neat about the fabric is that I've already opened it, so because I was excited and I couldn't wait, <laughs> is that the package itself had a sticker on there and on the sticker, it told you what the fabric was and how to care for it. I think that's fantastic and it's extremely helpful, especially if you're new to fabrics. But this particular Rayon Chalet is so soft and drapey. I have several different Rayon Chalets in my stash because it's one of my favorite fabrics but none of them are quite this soft. I don't know where they got this from, but it is so gorgeous, vibrantly red and soft. And it is 2.75 yards. And I believe that the majority of their boxes will come with anywhere between two to three yards of fabric, depending on what the pattern is that's included in the box. So this is 2.7 yards of fabric for the top. This is what the pattern looks like when it comes in your box. It is printed on this really nice sturdy paper. Now it's perfectly appropriate for tracing off your size or if you're like me and you feel brave, you can just cut the pattern right out. You don't have to worry about taping pieces together or you don't have to worry about tracing out your size if you don't plan on using it for anyone else but yourself. 
um, or you don't worry about your weight fluctuation or anything like that. You can just cut the pattern straight out. And because it's on this sturdy paper, you can use the pattern over and over again without fear of it ripping and falling apart like some of our tissue paper patterns. I think this is a really nice quality of paper. The next thing in the box is an awesome seam ripper. Oh my gosh, you guys. I love seam rippers that have this really nice grip. I haven't opened this yet, but hopefully you can see it. It has a really nice rubber grip with finger indents. Number one, it's so much more comfortable to unpick your garments when you have something that just feels good in the hands. Um, it makes the process smoother and more enjoyable. I mean, it sucks to, to rip any stitches. Let's be honest, seam ripping is the worst. But if you have to do it, you have to do it in comfort and efficiency. So I think that tools like this are really nice to have. And one of the things I love about Indie Stitch is that they include some surprise sewing tools that sometimes either we run through or we never heard of or we've always wanted to try but didn't buy. And I love that. So for this box, there is a seam ripper and it's about to get some love because I'm definitely gonna be using it. The next thing in here is the sewing needle and there are two flat shank um, needles in here, which is fantastic because if you break one, you have a backup. And these particular needles are actually a 7511, which is going to work really nicely with this nice drapey rayon chalet. And the next thing that we have is this embroidery thread. And this embroidery thread is actually to make the ties or tassels on your top, which I think is really cool because I never thought about making my own ties or tassels. I just assumed that you would buy them. <laughs> so it's really neat that the pattern actually walks you through the process of making your own tassels. So I love that. Tassels, ties, do you guys know what they're called? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Anyways, I'm glad that this was included in the box. And then also we have our thread, which goes along with our fabric and it's red and it's Guterman thread. And there's a little surprise in the box. This is a detoxify face mask. It's a charcoal peel off face mask. So you can totally put a mask on your face and take care of your skin while you're sewing your next outfit, okay? I love that, this is so cute. I did not expect this to be in the box and I don't think it's on the card either. No, so this was just a fun little surprise. Ah, I love it. And lastly in the box is a sticker and it says, if you see a seam ripper, now is not the time. <laughs> Isn't that the truth, ladies? Are we in the best mood, okay? If we have to rip our stitches, probably not. So now is not the time, okay? <laughs> Anyways, that's a very cute sticker. Those are all the things that came in my box. I absolutely love all of these things and I cannot wait to get started on my top. What a wonderful, wonderful box. Now, I had never heard of this pattern company. If you have sewn the blank slate patterns, patterns before, please let me know what you thought. Do you enjoy their patterns? Have you purchased them before? This is a new brand to me and I'm really excited to be introduced to it. Again, if you're interested in picking up your own Indie Stitch box, please go to the link in the information section below. Now, lastly friends, I want to share that because it's Valentine's Day, Create Room is having their annual Valentine's Day sale. If you are interested in getting yourself the sewing setup of your dreams, do check out their website. I will have links for that below. The sale is pretty good. You're going to save up to $900 on your customized sewing setup. This is my dream box. You guys have seen it a million times. I also have a uh, dream cart, which is my cutting table. I've done dedicated videos on both the dream box and my cutting table on my channel before. So I'm not going to do a walkthrough with you. Um, you can feel free to check out my other videos, but if you'd like to get your own dream sewing set up and you want to save yourself some money, definitely check them out. I will put information about the sale in the information section below. And those are all the things that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, oh, I almost forgot you guys. I said I wanted to talk to you about my buttons. I recently purchased the Tabitha Sewer buttons. I've been wanting to buy her buttons forever, but let's be real, they're expensive, okay? Those buttons are gorgeous and they are priced accordingly, okay? You're paying for what you get, okay? Because they're unique and beautiful and special. And I finally bit the bullet and I purchased some buttons for my BHM projects and they did not arrive yet. I mean, I feel like I'm the challenges that keep coming <laughs> with my sewing this month is just, 
<sighs> Lord help me, okay? Um, so anyways, today I had to uh, rush out and buy buttons so that I can finish my project. So I got these two little buttons. This is La Mode. They were pretty inexpensive. I love them because they're iridescent and they're not the exact size that I need. These are 22 millimeters and I think I needed 25. I'm not sure. I'll have to double check, but they'll work. I mean, they will do just fine. And these are for my Nina jumpsuit because the straps on that guy crisscross in the back and then they attach to the top of the pants in the back. So that's what I picked those up for. And then I also thought I might make a button up if I have trouble finding a great substitute to my puffed t-shirt idea. Um, I will make a button up shirt and I will use these awesome, really cool sparkly diamond looking buttons. Now I wanna say these were five bucks, but there are 11 buttons in here, which is a fantastic deal. Cause let me tell you, my Tabitha Solar buttons are expensive. <laughs> Her buttons are so beautiful. So I'm excited that I made my order. I can't wait to receive them and I will put them on another garment since they are probably not gonna make it in time for me to sew up my gorgeous outfit for BHM. But um, they are also sparkly and I also got some glitter buttons too that I think are just fantastic. So those are the buttons I picked up. Well friends, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. I hope you have a fantastic day, a fantastic weekend, a fantastic week, and a fabulous February, okay? Happy Black History Month. Happy Valentine's Day, okay? And I want to remind you that the Elevate with Ankara sewing series is still going. We just introduced the next garment and the reveal of our garment. That video will post on February 28th, so please check back on both my channel as well as Talisha of Creativity by T so that you can see the awesome jackets that we made using Ankara fabric. Thank you so much, and I will talk to you really soon. Bye.